Call the regular council meeting of June 28th to order, looking for an adoption of the agenda. Uh, we've got an addition. We're going to be talking masks. So with the amendment, still so moved. This is the wrong meeting, George. Yes. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Anything else? Are we adding additions about the masks? Thank you. This is the city of Ontario. <laughs> that's why that was funny. <laughs> I literally just said that. <laughs> yes, with the addition of a mask. Do we have that information? Okay. Um, so masks we're going to have is 5A and property tax will be 6C. Okay. Okay, anything else? Nope. With the changes, those in favor? Carried. Uh, item 3A, approval of the minutes for Committee of the Whole. Councillor Nielsen. In the absence of Kevin, <laughs> I would move the adoption of the June 14, 2021 Committee of the Whole minutes. Moved by Councillor Nielsen. Any errors or omissions? Thank you. Ready for the question, those in favor? Carried. I would like to move the adoption of regular council meeting minutes of June 14th. Moved by Councilor Nielsen. I have one amendment to that as Councilor Blatz did not make a motion regarding, was it the trailers, the aqua trailers? Uh, yes. uh, it, was, uh, it was rescinded, it wasn't tabled. So that's the only change to the minutes for June 14th. Just put that over so that'll be reflected in the minutes. Anything else? Ready for the question? Those in favor? Carried. Item 4A, a delegation from Ellis Jovaka. Do we have Ellis on? Hello, can you hear me? We sure can. Oh, hi there, sir. Sorry about that. Having a little trouble here, but I'm glad you can hear me. Absolutely. Yeah, thanks. Thank, thank you very much. Um, are, we in, are we on the right agenda? We're here for the Dorchester uh, Ranch Resort. You betcha. Thank you very much, sirs. Uh, good day. My name is John Melly. In 2015, my partners and I lent Developer One substantial funds to complete the development of lands in your county known as Dorchester Ranch Resort. In, into service titled recreational lots. There was a development agreement in place between the county and developer one with millions in an escrow fund to cover the cost of construction for servicing, road building, et cetera, in the event that developer one defaulted. In 2017, developer one defaulted on the development agreement and our loan. In 2017, a new developer two took over the uh, development and assumed our loan at a discounted loss to us of over 1.5 million. A new development agreement was put in place between the county and developer two with a budget amount of 6.5 million for completion of rural road uh, 11, service a sewer lift station, water treatment plant, 
completion of internal subdivision roads. The county chose that the escrow fund be secured by only 50% of this amount. There was 2 million in escrow funds from the prior developer. This meant developer two needed only to forward 1.2 million uh, uh, only. Developer two only completed the internal roads to 80%, but was given back his 1.25 million. He was given back $1 for every 50 cents he put up for actual work completed. The county erred in requiring only 50% escrow funds and in the amounts refunded to developer two for work completed. In 2019, developer two defaulted on development agreement and our loan. 2019, we started a foreclosure action against developer two. In 2020, uh, August, court granted us an order for foreclosure to become owners of the lands. We, the financiers, became owners of 81 lots and, and remainder of the lands. Note the foreclosure process cleared, uh, cleared the titles of all applicable encumbrances on the on title relating to such. This included the development agreement with developer two. We had no obligation to any prior development agreement. We wish to clarify, we are not developers. We are landowners and taxpayers like 95 other owner entities in Dorchester Ranch. None of the owners, including us, are responsible for the totality of Dorchester Ranch. That falls on the county. Sewer lift station, when will this be completed? We have been pushing to have this completed since September 2020 when we met with county executives and were provi provided confirmation the station would be completed by the end of 2020 at a cost of $800,000. A, a few months ago, we were approached that a new upgraded station had been designed costing 1.3 million and requiring some of our land from our ridge lots for the extra construction and for the expansion of the turn of the service road. We offered the extra lands required to the county for free in return for resurfacing of the affected lots and for helping us reapply for the eight lot subdivision. We were considering to reapply for this small subdivision not to be developers, to, but to maintain the value of our lands. In the last month, we have been given a new, new plan design uh, for the station, uh, showing uh, the only land needed to be given up is for the road turn. This plan is very ambiguous, and we have asked for clarification of several points from the head of Waterworks, Neil Powell. We still wait, await answers. To date, we have not seen any legal paperwork to legally transfer the land required. We wish to clarify, we have never provided one minute's loss of time on the building process for this station. We want it done yesterday. It is costing us much loss in the value of our lot sales. It is costing us all owners of Dorchester Ranch unnecessary additional costs to have a dump a pump truck pump the waste. This is ridiculous with a sewer line in place. It, is, it costs us all owners as well on the damage this dump, a pump truck is doing to our paved internal streets that still require the final asphalt. As major landowners in Dorchester Ranch, we pay over $50,000 a year in taxes and $50,000 a year in utility charges for lots we do not use and many that do not even have service connections on them. We, along with all other owners and taxpayers, do not feel we are being treated fairly by the county. We are getting minimal service for these funds. We feel that the notion that there is or that there should be some developer responsibility contributes to this ad attitude by the county uh, to Dorchester residents. This is wrong. There is no developer. You, the county, are responsible for the subdivision. You need to treat us owners as fairly as all others in your county. Thank you for allowing me to speak. This completes my talk. If you have any other questions, please ask. Also, there is a, one other owner, Leo Brooks from the subdivision that has ha been helping us try to find ways to achieve uh, ways to do some of the servicing and road work. He was hoping to maybe uh, uh, ask for two minutes of your time if that's available. Thanks very much, John. As you're aware, this is the city of Wetaskiwin and we don't have any jurisdiction in the county of Wetaskiwin regarding their development, their de development plans, their taxation, their utility rates, 
road allowances, anything like that. So I'm, I'm just curious as to what you're hoping to achieve by presenting to the city council. Well, that's why I asked if we were in a right meeting with regards to uh, the Dorchester Ranch. So I apologize if there's a confusion. That's okay. No, we had you as a delegation to present to city council and our legislative clerk had told you that this was for the city of Wetasco, not the county of Wetasco, and that you still wanted to present to us. Okay, well, we appreciate yeah. it. Sorry for the confusion and oh, thank okay. you very much for your time. Yeah, I think John, your admin assistant must have, must have uh, confuse the the name so yeah i won't i won't make my presentation so okay thank that's you great for, thank uh, you leo and thank you council sorry for your time no worries thanks gentlemen thank okay. you bye bye now it's uh, we're taking 4b out so moving along to 4c uh delegation of sega welcome don <laughs> Hello, how is everybody today? Really good, thank you. How are you? I'm very good. Uh, we're, we're trying to stay a little bit cool over here so the lights are off. <laughs> um, I just wanted to say thank you to the city for all the support that you've given Saga over the last uh, two, three years that we've been in existence. And um, this is a kind of a small ask. Um, when we hosted Pride in 2019, we had about 100 people show up and we had um, people travel from Pinoca, from Leduc, uh, some people as far away as Clyde, if you know where that is, north of St. Albert. Um, so we had some people come and likely brought money into the community. And um, so our, our ask for pride this year, um, especially in respect to the fact that we received no funding from the city this year uh, in our request for a grant. Um, our request is uh, for the, the park fees for Jubilee Park for August 14th um, for, it was $152, I believe. Uh, we're asking uh, if the city council would be willing to, um, to help us with those costs. So uh, what we would need is garbage cans for the event. Um, last time there was a water or drink fountain or water bottle fountain set up, if we could have that again, uh, to have our dunk tank filled with water on the morning of August 14th, um, for you to, uh, us to be able to use 20 tables and 150 chairs that would be brought to the park. We can find people to set those up, that's no problem. Um, and also power um, power uh, off of the um, Norquest building um, to be used for the, the United Church we partnered with and they're gonna run our concession. Um, and also power for the stage as well uh, for the amphitheater. And so uh, we thank you very much for everything you've done. You've been very, very supportive. Um, we appreciate the, the closure last year, last week of the, uh, the side or the crosswalks at 54th Street and 55th Street. Um, and, and again, we appreciate any partnership that we have with the city. Uh, you guys have been really wonderful. And uh, we just wanted to, to ask uh, if you can help us out again. Um, and I know that hopefully this year we can get a little bigger um we're hoping for maybe 200 people out this year and we're already know we already know that there are no pride celebrations in the area on that weekend so hopefully we can draw from the greater communities around us including edmonton um, and area as well are there any questions i'll get a motion to accept his information and then we can get into questions Councilor Billingsley? I move the City Council accept the delegation as information. Moved by Councilor Billingsley. Did you, Don, did Sega apply? So go ahead, Councilor Well, I think I was going to ask the exact same question. Um, did they apply for grant and aid? And is there a mechanism for the second half of the year? I thought we had talked about a little bit about that. I hope through the chair to Councilor Billingsley, um, they did. There was a lot of discussion around the grant and aid. There's still money sitting in that pot. And um, they, we could direct um, Dawn through that application process again, but we were still waiting. Did we get that report on their financials from last year, Claire? Okay, so I think we would attach that to that official request and push it through at the next council meeting. Okay. Well, 
my opinion, that's the way it should go through the two grants and leave the grant system. Not a council meeting. Yeah, I agree. When did we get financials? <laughs> Don't know. That's okay. Um, okay, that's fine. I'll wait till I see the financial report done. Okay. And then it'll be uh, so our administration will work with you on applying through our grant and aid program, and then it'll be brought okay. back to council uh, in July. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah, and power from Northwest would come from Northwest or the property owner there, not from the city. Okay. 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 I will. Uh, I will. I will speak with people at Northwest. Anything else? Ready for the question, those in favor? Thanks, Don. They'll reach out to you. Okay, thank you very much. Take care, everybody. Stay cool. Stay cool. Item 5A, mask. <laughs> um, with the uh, changes that the uh, provincial government um, and AHS has brought forward with the restrictions being lifted on July the 1st, provincially. Um, I'm gonna move to repeal bylaw 1973-20, effective July 1st, 2021. Moved by Comfort Billingsley. Uh, Karen, in your research, what is the process on this? Do we need the free reading with unanimous consent? Okay. So you'll have first reading, second reading, approval of unanimous, third reading, and then third reading. There we go. There we go. Um, do I need to say the first reading? Yeah. Uh, first reading to bylaw one uh, move that uh, to repeal bylaw one nine nine eight two one being a bylaw to repeal temporary COVID nineteen case covering bylaw one nine seven three to be read the first time. Moved by Council Billingsley. Any discussion? Okay. Well, not to be negative, Ned, I guess. Um, my apologies to any Neds out there. Um, in the event that it is repealed, and because the original bylaw stated that when we hit a certain number, we'd go into masking. 15, yeah. Right. So what would, and hopefully we'd never get there, but in the event that we had another spike in our community, what what then is the process to go back into a mask? Call but, a special council meeting and then have the same three readings read for a bylaw with unanimous consent to go to a third reading <coughs> with uh, public notice. For a bylaw, we do that notification through the paper on our Facebook page, uh, city website. We can have a special council meeting and then read our three readings. Having that unanimous consent can be done in the same meeting. And this bylaw went into effect based on 15. We identified 15 being a target number. Would we anticipate setting a target number to reconvene a meeting or any councillor who any said, hey, I'm concerned? Yeah. Okay, I'm good, thank you. Yeah. Councillor Hilgert. And so the bylaw states that now, July 12th, 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 July have that spike in numbers again. So immediately, once we get to 15 or more, bylaw comes into effect, and then the whole process starts again, where we have to be below for 30 days. So we have to do We would have to do nothing. No, if that, if this, correct. If this does not go through, if this bylaw does not go through today, our current mask bylaw is in place, and as soon as we have 15 or more, masks are then required, and then it takes 30 days for that to come off again. We wouldn't have to do anything. 
19th meeting, council chambers will adapt to normal. Or so I've been told. <laughs> Councilor Blatt. I'm not sure who this question is directed at, but would we have to call a state of local emergency again if there was a spike in numbers and then we would call a special council meeting or? Okay. No. Okay, cool. So for clarification, we're voting on to remove masks as a government August or July the first. Correct. Councilor Blatt, Councilor Nielsen. I, no, July first, the province is eliminating the mask, the mask mandate, and so Councilor Billingsley is saying that the city line up with what the province is doing. Okay. There we go. Ready for the question? Those in favor? Third. I move the city council give second reading to bylaw 1998-21. Moved by Councilor Billingsley. Any discussion? Ready for the question? Those in favor? Third. I move the city council gives unanimous consent to third reading of bylaw 1998-21. Moved by Councilor Billingsley. Any discussion? What is the process for administration on notification for businesses that, because part of that bylaw was is that they had to um, display our bylaw on each of their businesses. Are we then reaching out that way or is it just um, through the newspaper and city website, Facebook page, that sort of stuff? To the chair, we would we would send notices. We could send notices to them directly, and then we would also have that as part of our um, social media updates, and we could put an ad in the newspaper. Perfect. And we'll have a, a city media release regardless if, if this goes through that this is now the bylaw has been rescinded. Masks are no longer mandatory, um, but wear them if you need to or don't feel comfortable not in. That sort of messaging will still go out. Correct. <laughs> So when we have our uh, mobile unit uh, displaying that too? Through the chair of Council Bronco, the VMS boards? Yeah, we can either remove them or just stop the messaging. Thank you. Anything else? Ready for the question, those in favor? Carried unanimously. I move the city council to give third reading to bylaw 1998-21. Moved by Councilor Billingsley. Any discussion? We're ready for the question. Hold on, please. Carried. Item 6A Request for decision on development permit D056 for an accessory building, those dimensions at 5317 50th Avenue in a direct control district. Thanks, Your Worship and Council. Uh, yeah, so this is a development permit that we received. Uh, in this particular area, um, the properties are zoned direct control, which is why council needs to make the decision um, on the development permit. So this is at 5317 50th Avenue. Um, it's a pretty typical single detached building, um, single detached residence um, on a typical downtown lot. Um, there's already a detached garage on the property. Um, so this will just be an accessory building um, shed essentially. The size is 9.1 meters uh, by 7.3 meters uh, and it's 2.7 meters tall. This building does comply with, um, sorry, I should say this direct control location doesn't specify any development uh, regulations at all. So 
The discretion really is up to council whether to approve anything in this location. That being said, the direct control zoning, I believe the intent was to uh, guide future development towards more commercial uses, but there isn't actually any uh, downtown plan or anything guiding that. And so um, in administration's opinion, it's certainly reasonable for the current landowner to expect that they'd continue to be able to use the land uh, for its current residential purpose. And so this application does comply with that purpose. The surrounding properties are zoned R2, which is medium density residential. And if we apply all of the regulations found in the R2 district to this particular property, it complies with all of those. So this application doesn't stray from the typical built form or anything like that. It complies with all the property uh, setbacks that you'd find in a typical R2 zone. And so administration has no issues with this application. And so we're requesting that council does approve it. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. I understand a motion and then we can get into discussion. Okay. Thank you. Through the chair to Andrew. Um, and you may have, you may have answered this, Andrew, in your in your presentation, but just to be clear, um, because it's direct control, if there was a decision to um, turn this into a, a business of some sort, a backyard restaurant, I, I don't know, um, what would have to happen in a direct control um, zone to change the purpose from a shed to a business entity? That would require a change of use permit. So this application is really just for the building, but it still complies with the residential use of the land. So if it was going to change to a commercial use, then we would need a separate change of use permit, which is a permit as well. Um, but we haven't received that and it's not indicated on the application. Um, the, it, it appears the intent of this is just to be part of the residential use that currently exists. Thank you. And for the council, Bronco. Uh, thank you, Andrew. Uh, to, uh, Andrew. Andrew, uh, the indirect control, do the residents within 50 meters get a a letter or may or yay? Yeah, they will be notified. So we could approve this, but if the residents uh, don't like it, so they come back to us or we just say go ahead? No, it's uh, there's no appeal process. It's simply notification to let them know that it was approved. Thank you. Anything else? Are you for the question? Those in favor? Sure. And 6B vacant land incentives. I'll speak to that. Um, after we have the report, um, it really kind of spurred <laughs> with the um, uh, Centennial Park and, and possibly changing the uh, um, screening at excess prop or surplus property. Um, I kind of wanted to take a look at at some concerns that we had a whole lot of vacant property within the community that had been that has been vacant for so long. So um, I worked a little bit with Sue on um, bringing some motions forward for consideration. So I'll move forward with the first one, which is move the city council directs administration to explore the number of vacant properties in the city and ensure that they're all assessed correctly. Moved by Councilor Billington. Any discussion? Councilor Nielsen. Through the chair, Council Billington, when you say ensure they're all assessed correctly, are you, are you indicating that we have the assessment firm come back out or we're going to just do the mathematical calculation and say, yep, it adds up? Well, go ahead. Yeah, so uh, through the chair to Councillor Nielsen, what we would do was confirm what 
um, they are zoned as, what their use is, and what they're actually being assessed at. So we would be working with the assessment group to determine that the assessment is appropriate because even though there's a zoning, if the use is different, assessment law states that a certain percentage of the use has to be accounted for. So um, we would confirm all three of those pieces. Anyway, we're ready for the question on the table. Okay. Move that council direct administration's report back to council on August 16th, 2021 on the findings and proposed action. Moved by Councilor Billington. Any discussion? Councilor Billington. That's enough time. Okay. <clears throat> ready for the question on the Third. Move that council direct administration to bring incentive options for vacant land owners to encourage its development by the August 16, 2021 regular council meeting. Moved by Councilor Billingsley. Any discussion? Councilor Newton. Yeah. So what you're saying is, is that, that that they may not come back to us with incentives for vacant properties. Is that what you're? Okay. <laughs> But, and I guess I'm wondering, I, I think really where there's possibly an issue is, is that some of these properties are not zoned correctly or, and then from there, um, and maybe there's a next step in the sense that if they are seen uh, incorrect, let's incentivize the landowners to do something with the property. Because if they were identified incorrectly, um, we're probably not going to have, we're probably going to have a, a couple of landowners who are not going to be very happy with. There you go. Ready for the question? Over there. Carried. Thank you. Item agenda item 6C property tax cancellation. To the mayor, to council, before you is a request for decision on four properties relating to uh, requests for uh, relief on taxes. Uh, first, from the Tasquin Lodge 1559 Loyal Order of the Moose and the uh, Tasquin Masonic Hall for tax calculation. And also the city has two agreements, one with the Lions Club for the Lions Campground and the other with the Knights of Columbus for by the Lake Park facility in which uh, they're looking to have their taxes canceled. Uh, the Local Government Act under 3471, bracket one, allows uh, the city to do uh, those uh, to council taxes or um, and the total amount as you can see is eighteen thousand four hundred and fifteen dollars and eighty one cents the amount of the budget is twenty thousand dollars so effectively uh, staff is recommending that council uh, council of the municipal portion of the property tax Taxes on rolls 210210, the Moose Hall, and roll 180900 and 180910, the Masonic Hall, pursuant to section 341, and that council council of the total tax levy for roll 36 or 360020, the Lions Campground, 
in accordance with the lease agreement dated October 10th, 1995, and subsequent extensions thereto, presumed again to section 341, uh, or sorry, 347.1 of the Municipal Government Act. And finally, the council council, the total tax levy roll for 390.070, the Knights of Columbus, in accordance with the lease agreement dated July 22nd, 1996, and extensions thereto pursuant to section 341.1 of the Municipal Government Act. My apologies, my screen deflector was on. I look for a motion. Another discussion. Moved by Councilor Hillgarden. Any discussion? So, so this, this is just showing that we're doing for. Sorry, I can barely hear. Okay. So this is basically the same. Um, We've been doing this year after year after year. It's sort of like a standard procedure, correct? That's correct. Okay. Thank you. Councilor Billingsley. Just a question about the uh, uh, Masonic Hall. Are they still active as a community organization? <laughs> uh, through uh, the mayor. I can't speak to that. I'd have to double check. To that though, they wouldn't they wouldn't be they wouldn't qualify for a tax cancellation if they weren't, right? That's correct. Anything else? Ready right for the question? Move in favor. Carried. I move the city council cancels the total tax levy for rule 360020, the Lions Campground, in accordance with the lease agreement dated. October the 10th, 1995, subsequent extensions there to proceed to section 347-1 of the Municipal Government Act. Moved by Councilor Hillgardner. Any discussion? Councilor Hillgardner. Thank you. Can I, through the chair, um, so we're, we are canceling the entire tax levy, so that'd be school tax and everything? That's correct. And so we can cancel the school tax or we end up having to pay that school tax? Uh, the city pays the school tax on behalf. Yeah, so that the school tax is still has to be paid, but the uh, city covers. And that's part of the agreement. We have to be agreeing with them. Yes. That's current agreement we have with. That's correct. And that agreement goes for how long? I don't know off the top of my head. I believe it's, uh, uh, I, I'd have to double check for council. After the chair to Councilor Nielsen, I believe that one was a long one, like 99 years, but we've had opportunities to renew um, throughout so we can check when the next opportunity to renew is. And I, and I don't know enough about the arrangement with the Lions campground. I guess I just wonder why we're, the taxpayers are paying the school levy for the Lions campground. I understand exempting the municipal portion of the property tax. But... Through, through the mayor, if I, uh, if I may, um, as stated in the report, uh, the thought was that as other community halls are managed by the city, uh, previous municipal tax levies have been canceled so that all community halls are equitably responsible or so, yeah, reasonable for the tax uh, burden. 
So th that's the reason uh, is to make it uh, equitable throughout. And yet we're not we're not waiving the school portion for the Masonic Hall or the Moose Hall. That is correct. Yes. I'm going to go by my memory that the Lions campground and the agreement that the city has with them is that they're providing a campground for the municipality. So we're going to be covering the tax roll, the total tax roll on it. So that was the, the trade off of them having a campground in our municipality and the Knights of Columbus at the, that's the uh, by Lake Park Hall because that was a city building on city land. That's yeah. why we're waiting the, yeah. so for both of those. It was, I'm certain that it was because we had the Lions who are operating campground, which is available to the municipality. At the time, there was no other campground in the municipality. And then with the Knights of Columbus Hall, because it was city and they took it over. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you look like you were deep in thought, so I was gonna. Oh, sorry. No. no. I'm glad I looked like I was thinking. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else? Ready for the question? Those in favor? Opposed? Carried. I move that the city council cancels the total tax levy for rule 390070, the Knights of Columbus. In accordance with the lease agreement dated July 22nd, 1996, and the extension thereto pursuant to the section 347-1 uh, of the Municipal Government Act. Moved by Councilor Hillgardner. Any discussion? All right, for the question, all in favor? Opposed? Carried. And 7A, COVID-19 vaccine outreach and education. We have spoke about this during media as a whole. I've already sent an email to the good doctor and let them know that if they would like to uh, promote vaccination, they're welcome to do so. And they can also schedule a time to be a delegation at a council meeting, but that the city wouldn't be um, driving the whatever you want to call it, the outreach. But a question, because when I look at the very last statement in the letter, we'd be happy to work to support you and adapt the outreach locally. Um, and to me, that sounds like they're prepared to do it through us. And you're saying, we're not interested, but you're welcome to come into our community and do whatever it is you choose. Right, and and or come and be a delegation at our council meeting, which would also give them a, a platform to get their message out. Okay, but the, the expectation is that our staff are not going to be putting something together for them. Correct. Thank you. The city will not be promoting vaccination, but would welcome you to, if you'd like, you can make a present presentation to city council as a delegation as well contact our clerk that was my response yeah, thank you yeah. uh yeah move by council billing please any questions or comments or for the question those in favor sure Anything else? There is no after. Somebody can still make a motion to adjourn. Councilor Blatz. <laughs> Those in favor? Gary, thank you. <laughs>